Okay, there's some more stuff on inductors. I've got some experiments I want to try. Um, because I've been, you know, trying to kind of think about this kind of stuff, this uh, switching power supplies. But I had some questions uh, about how the uh, inductors work um, that I wanted to look into. But, you know, first I wanted to make a point here that I don't know if I made clear in my other videos that, okay. Um, let me put this back to how it originally was, how they originally had it. Okay, you know, basically, um, this doesn't do anything. I was actually trying to mimic the high impedance air gap you would have when a switch changes, so I could simulate the arc, but I guess they do this like instantaneously, so... <laughs> So it never actually sees this one mega ohm resistor, so uh, I'll set that aside. Um, actually, charge it up um, so you can see you know how fast this thing charges up right <coughs> and it's charging up you know to 5 volts because we got a 5 volt there I'll fill there um, and let me dump it and you know it's actually discharging at the rate of 5 volts um, you know and discharging at the same amount of time now of course if I reduce this to 10% of the input, you know, if I ch charge it up, of course it's going to take just as long because, you know, this doesn't affect how the charge rate. But I'm discharging into a smaller impedance, so you can see now that, well, guess what? It takes 10 times longer to discharge and it comes out as a, a lower voltage. So, um, So you lose voltage, you know, it's like half a volt or whatever, but you gain discharge time. So, um, but basically you're taking a finite amount of energy and you're spreading it out over a much longer period of time. Because again, this was trying to maintain whatever current we had going through this thing. Um, <coughs> when we, before we close the switch. So, now you put this in here, you know, and let it fully charge up, you can see what kind of current it is. Okay, it's, it's trying to maintain 35 milliamps, right? <coughs> but 35 milliamps is going to be the current it tries to maintain, but now it's doing it into a 14 ohm resistor, okay? So, that means 0.35 times 14, you know, equals, um, oh, 0.49 volts. So, um, 0.035. But, um, so, you know, like I said, when you discharge it, the voltage is a lot lower. Um, now you may think that, well, you know, I wonder if I can, you know, uh, increase the ch decrease the charge time by lowering the input impedance. Well, the thing about it is, if you lower the input impedance, <coughs> um, and let me reset it so this is more clear you lower the input impedance, you're trying to put more energy, 10 times as much energy into it. So since you're trying to, you know, because the current you're trying to make 10 times larger. So because it's, you're trying to put a larger current in it, it takes 10 times longer to charge because you are putting 10 times as much energy into it. It's just like taking a capacitor. If you increase the capacitor, you know, um, by 10 times, 
um, you know, you're putting more energy into it, and that's effectively what you're doing here, you know, because it's it's easy to think, you know, okay, a capacitor, you know, the smaller the resistor, the the the, the quicker that capacitor will charge up, right? That's how capacitors work. Um, so you know, you think, yeah, you know, but a capacitor stores the same amount of energy if you charge it up to the same voltage, no matter what. You know, it always stores if it's a one joule capacitor at five volts. You know, um, you know, or let's say if it's a five joule, you know, one far capacitor at five volts, it's going to store five joules no matter what. You know, if you leave it on long enough to charge up, um, it's always got five joules in it. But that doesn't work that way with inductors. You know, they, you know, once that that current stabilizes, you know, remember before it was like at 35 milliamps. Now it's at 350 milliamps. So again. You know, you're actually putting ten times as much energy in effect in this field bec uh, because of the fact that uh, it's capable of storing a lot more, it, but it's based on how much current is flowing through it. And that's why when you remove the current, okay, it's not like a capacitor, like I've uh, said elsewhere. You know, inductors don't work like capacitors. You know, because capacitors they can maintain that energy indefinitely, but an inductor. It only maintains that energy as long as it only maintains that energy as long as um, there's current flowing through the circuit. You know, um, that's that's how it maintains that magnetic field. But and like I said, at some other point, you know, I said if this thing were like a superconductor, it could actually, you know, ma basically maintain that magnetic field on its own indefinitely. You know, um, it, it wouldn't, you know, you could have zero resistance in the circuit. You could have an infinitely circulating current like an MRI magnet has in it. So an MRI magnet is not hooked to electricity. You know, it's actually always on because it's a superconductor. <laughs> and they can't turn it off because the damn thing will explode um, because it's got so much energy stored in it. I mean, if the, the circuit it's in all of a sudden gained resistance, yeah, you got kind of a bomb on your hands. Um, because if it all, you know, it goes from not seeing any resistance to all of a sudden seeing a bunch of resistance, you get a lot of current flowing in there to generate an intense magnetic field like that. So, well, get, voila, you know, you just blew up. <coughs> so, um, I don't know how much energy you can store in a, you know, in a superconductor. It makes you kind of wonder. I know they've talked about well, like on that movie um, Frankenstein Unbound, you know, uh, Doctor Buchanan's car was powered by a superconductor. Basically, you know, it's it just stored energy, you know, in a superconductor and you know released it, you know, as needed. So that was kind of the principle. Um, but at any rate, you know, inductors work kind of like that, but they have to maintain that current to store energy. It doesn't just sit there idle. It's like a dynamic thing. So, um, yeah, if you've got dynamic, um, you know, juice flowing through it, you know, the damn thing's going to store energy into it. But at any rate, you know, okay, it took a long time to charge this thing up, right? Now it's going to take, you may think, oh, it'll discharge faster. It's got ten times more energy. No, nope. it takes the same amount of time to discharge as it did before. It's got the same impedance. But actually, it may take longer now that it's got ten times the amount of energy. But it should take as long to discharge as it took to charge. So, again, to me, that looks like ten times, but it's discharging at a higher voltage now. <coughs> so that's where the the extra in, you know energy went is that you know it's actually discharging at a higher voltage, but it'll take the exact same amount of time it did before. In other words, the impedance and the inductance is all that determines the discharge time. So what that means is is that's why you know you have a an LR time constant. Same thing in a, a capacitor has an RC time constant. It doesn't matter what voltage is in it. You know, it takes the same amount of time. It's strictly determined based on the size of the inductor and the size of the impedance. Just like a capacitor is strictly the size of the capacitor and the size of the impedance. So that's kind of how it works. Um, you know, so you configure that whatever values you set here are always going to be the same charge and discharge time. But what's interesting is. You know, with a capacitor, what you do, you know, um, you know, and like I said, I never, you know, called your attention to this, but uh, I'll show you here in a minute. 
but um, you know in a capacitor you know an RC circuit you know if you decrease the size of the inductance the current increases right the voltage stays the same but the current increases you know uh, because you got a smaller resistor than you charged with right um, so but um, you know if you double the size of the, uh, the the output the discharge impedance you know you're gonna you know double the discharge time but with an inductor um, you know you know remember a capacitor tries to maintain the same voltage when well, an inductor tries to maintain the same current so um, but just like with a capacitor a capacitor tries to maintain the same voltage but has a variable current depending on your impedance well an inductor tries to maintain the same current and has a variable voltage based on the same impedance so it's just another way of looking at it so like I said to you we got 350 ish milliamps uh, charged up now watch what happens over here when I change the switch this will go up to start at 350 milliamps see but the voltage you know is has inverted you know because uh, it's trying to maintain that current flow but that's the secret to inductors is just realizing that any time it changes state it's trying to maintain that current flow no matter what that's like what it does it's its thing just like a capacitor tries to maintain uh, its voltage well this tries to maintain its current and it doesn't care about voltage a capacitor tries to maintain its voltage it doesn't care about current it'll do whatever it do has to with current to try to maintain its voltage um, so you know that's why you get a higher rate of, of current on a smaller resistance it's actually trying to just maintain its voltage is what it's trying to do so you can look at it that way but a smaller impedance will cause a capacitor to discharge faster even though it's trying to maintain its voltage well <laughs> I mean you know it's only got so much energy to work with so but it's essentially exactly the same phenomenon we're seeing with current in an inductor it's trying to maintain its current but the interesting thing is is that since it's trying to maintain its current the how it works with impedances is bass backwards from what you would think you know so the smaller the impedance you put the longer it takes to discharge it um, you know it spreads it out in time because it's trying to just maintain its current so if the impedance matches you know what you charged it with and again what do you what you charged it with is irrelevant you know you can charge it with any impedance you want but it's it is relevant in the sense of how much energy you're going to store in it so bigger impedance less energy gets stored okay smaller impedance bigger field more energy gets stored so that's the relationship but so it's not totally irrelevant what impedance you charge it in with but really what really matters is how much energy you put into it but you put more energy into it with a smaller impedance than a larger impedance because that's what limits the ultimate current you know that flows is how much impedance you DC impedance you got in a DC circuit that's what's going to limit how much current flows through that inductor so therefore it's going to directly limit how much energy you store in that inductor <coughs> um, and as far as discharge is concerned you're really just doing the opposite you know so if you start with the same impedance it'll take the same amount of time to discharge it um, but you know again you go um, with a lower impedance it's going to take you know like 10 times lower it's going to take 10 times longer to discharge it because you know it's trying to maintain the same current so it doesn't care if it's in a lower impedance what it'll do is it'll just lower the voltage and that's exactly what it does you know so like I said you know we go to a lower voltage on this I'm mean in a lower um, resistance and charge it up you know and like I said it'll charge up really fast relatively fast but then when I switch over it's going to discharge you know back to our one tenth of five volts in other words it'll be back to five volts but at a higher current that it'll try to maintain for a longer period of time so if you want current to be maintained you know uh, use a bigger inductor put more inter store more energy into it and discharge into a smaller uh, impedance so, so with inductors, you know, it's just the opposite. That's why it can, you know, get you in trouble sometimes with circuits because it does work just the opposite. If you're wanting to eliminate high voltage spikes, don't go with a higher impedance. Go with a lower impedance. 
So um, anyway, we're about fully about fully charged up now. Now switch over, and like I said, it's trying to maintain that 350 milliamps, but at you know 0.5 volts or whatnot, you know. So and it'll take that a while to discharge, <coughs> as you can see. But you know, at any rate, that is how it works. So. Um, and like I said, I guess we can go to, there's no reason to spend this much time charging the thing up. <coughs> but, um, but of course, inductors, you know, have a caveat, you know, they have a maximum amount of energy they can technically store before their core saturates. So that's one of the things, you know, like a capacitor has a maximum amount of energy it can store before it just runs out of capacitance, right? So, um, well, inductors are the same way. The, the bigger the inductor, the more energy it can um, store, I think. I'll have to look into that, though, because uh, really inductance, I think, is a ma major different property. I mean, I think you can have really high inductance, but um, an easily saturated core, I'm not sure. But um, anyway, yeah, i got to look into the, you know, the whole inductance thing. I just hadn't done that much. You know, I still haven't, um, you know, reconciled inductance with this whole thing yet. Because, like I said, I was just still trying to figure out the basics of inductors and, um, you know, and energy and how it does with that and how these power supplies work. Um, so I've been meaning to look into the inductance part of it a little more carefully, but I just haven't got around to it yet. Um, but at any rate, you know, so we got 140. Joules now. Now it's going to really, really low voltage. You know, like 50 millivolts, and it's going to take like forever to char discharge. But let's um, let's go the opposite way now. Um, go up to 1400 ohms. All right, it's 1.4 k. Because now it's going to discharge really fast. But it's going to do it at a, uh, ten times the voltage. So it's hard to see it. I have to stop it here because, as I said, it's really quick. But see, it's like it's minus fifty volts is what's going on there. <coughs> but again, it's a lot faster. Um, So, anyway, you know, you can generate really high voltages, you know, by discharging into a, um, larger impedance, but it, it discharges way faster, so... You know, like we discussed in the other videos. As you can see, you know, it discharged in a tenth of the time, you know, but only charged up to, you know, five volts. So anyway, it's minus 50 volts plus 5 volts. 
Okay, I've got a basic transformer set up, and um, the reason I left this because this thing behaves squirrely for some reason without it. Uh, I'll show you in a minute, but um, you know, notice that this impedance and this impedance are equal. You know, when I charge it up, you know, this is our inductor, our transformer charging up. Um, right here and this is its voltage okay and this is our load current and our load voltage but notice that you know this is like two and a half volts remember we got five volts here um, and these assholes are they're 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 working on this fucking program as I'm using it so I don't know how much I trust this um, you know they're trying to update it or something um, but anyway, this is like 2.4 volts as well, but it spikes at 5 volts right off the bat. But again, I don't know how much of this stuff I can trust. Because you see, um, the current through the resistor starts off almost immediately at 25 milliamps. And this current through the inductor starts off at almost 25 milliamps immediately. So which is a little odd um, you know okay, 5 volts divided by 100 ohms you know will be 50 milliamps and that's what it's actually trying to get to in the inductor but it seems strange that it would start off at 25 milliamps almost immediately I mean it's not immediately but almost very quickly ramps up to that um, so it's like it it's treating it like a transformer resistive load at first but then it starts treating it like an inductor <laughs> after it hits 25 milliamps for some reason and and what I'm suspecting is is that 25 milliamp figure is probably a balance between this and this that's my theory assuming this is a real phenomenon I'm looking at um, because again when you're talking transformers that's why I trust this thing less because Again, it's probably more set up to treat these transformers as a transformer dealing with, you know, a, a power transformer instead of something unusual, which is kind of what I'm doing with it, something a little unusual. So it may not simulate this stuff crop properly, so I may not be seeing reality here. <laughs> but anyway, let me continue running this thing, because these are observations. I don't have any conclusions yet. I'm still just trying to chew on this. Um go ahead and let this thing fully charge up I'll show you what happens during a discharge alright that's good enough okay so here's the discharge now you can see the load is experiencing a minus 5 volt okay it's pretty much run its course now so you can see the load you know is pretty much you know minus 5 you know just under 5 volts again that's, that's part to do with this resistor here because I, again I have to leave this in here because it acts squirrely but it's still acting like a big negative voltage spike but then it very quickly drops to 5 volts so you, you see a very quick initial spike and that's probably the transient period while it's trying to figure out that hey I got a resistor here I should probably behave I don't know an inductor or, or, or should I behave like a, a transfer resistor because remember, this is a one-to-one -one ratio transformer I got here. It's so it should be reflecting this like one-to-one. -one. So, you know, again, that's why I suspect that this and this is playing off of each other during the charge curve. That's why this defaults to 25 milliamps instead of 50. Um, but uh, I should lower this to like one ohm and see what happens. But. <coughs> That would be interesting, actually. I might do that. Yeah, because if there, this were just an inductor thing, that would mean it would take a hundred times longer to charge. But given the fact it's got a load, I wonder what it would do. But anyway, you know. But you can see what the current did too. You know, the current started at a 40 milliamps here, but it's only at well, that starts out at 45 milliamps here, so it is kind of doing what I thought it would do. Because remember, you know, 50 milliamps was the actual charge curve current limit. 
so but see this uh, four milliamps you know this is what's throw, flowing through this 1k resistor you know so again it's not you know it's getting like 10% of the current because it's a 10 times bigger impedance you know in effect than it was charged by so that gives you an, you know again it's it's hard to say a cause and effect okay because you know this has the appearance like oh this knows somehow it was charged with a hundred ohm impedance it doesn't really know it was charged with a hundred ohm impedance it just knows it has a certain amount of current into it which results from it being charged with a hundred ohm impedance but I could have charged it with a different voltage too and you'd have the same result if it had the same amount of energy in it so that's what I'm, I'm trying to say is don't get confused over this versus this ratio this only applies for you know this situation given the voltage it's generating okay if I change this voltage of course it would generate a, a different output voltage unless I adjusted the resistor to equal the same amount of energy stored and if this had the same amount of energy stored in it it would generate the exact same result you're seeing here so don't get confused by that um, that's that's immaterial um, it's all a matter of it's all a matter of how much energy is stored in here and how much you, you allow it, what rate you allow it to release when you're looking at what kind of voltage is generated in this arrangement. Okay, and in the charge arrangement, none of this fucking shit matters. What matters is, you know, what kind of impedance you're charging it with and what kind of voltage you're charging it with. Because that's what's going to dictate what the ultimate current's going to be. And that's what its goal essentially becomes. Um, so, you know, that's what generates the voltage it generates. But, um, so like I said, you know, we, uh, you know, switch it back to here. Okay, we're back to having a 2.5 volt thing again. So, but that's also shared with a 2.5 volt thing here. So it's like splitting the voltage, and I don't think that's a coincidence that these are the same impedance. But again, ultimately, we're still trying to get up to the same 50 milliamps overall. But like I demonstrated earlier, you know, it's splitting the current too. Um, you know, the current's peak, you know, is limited by, you know, taking 50 milliamps and dividing it in half, even though this ultimately does get 50 milliamps going through it. It's really only technically technically grabbing half of the current because it starts at 25 milliamps. You never see the lower part of the curve, so. Um, and this this has the lower part of the curve so you know but you see our little transient spike here and then here you see this getting 5 milliamps of it and this getting 45 milliamps of it because 5 milliamps is flowing through here and the rest of it's flowing through the other thing our load so but again we charge this son of a bitch up charge this son of a bitch up you like I said at first you know it's getting like 25 it starts at 25 milliamps but this starts at 25 milliamps and diminishes so it's almost like it's it's like the load is getting the first part of this curve but inverted <laughs> you know reversed so because really it's starting off this starts off at where this this begins so it really is. It's like you're taking this thing, because the impedance is the same, it's like you're taking this thing, you know, which should be here, and you're cutting it out and inverting it and putting it here. And this has got to be because they have the same impedance. Um, that's why it's 50-50. So, you know, let's try to, uh, I'm sure this is going to produce some weird results on the output with regards to that spike it's going to be hard to read but um, let me reset it okay and as you would expect you know you have to take it forever to charge up you know like you're running in hundreds of milliseconds so far okay now 
can see, we're up to like 49 milliamps. I should have just went to 10. That, that probably would have been easier. Yeah, let me do that. But like I said, you know, this, you know, a resistor starts out at 50 milliamps now. <laughs> and, um, you know, so, well, a resistor starts out at, you know, at uh, 50 milliamps now, but this, this starts out at 50 milliamps too, so the resistor's taking that 50 milliamp curve again and reversing it, um, but then the rest of it's going into the resistor, so this is going to mostly go into inductance then. So this has got to represent, I want to, I want to say like fringe inductance, I mean, because again, it's so strange that this sort of behaves like a resistor right at first, but then it starts behaving like an inductor. That, that's, that's unusual. But anyway, let me let me do this again with a smaller resistor here. It'll go faster. Okay, so we can see, you know, this has peaked at 45 milliamps, and this has started at. Uh, you know, about 50 milliamps, so it's 50 by 50, hold on, <clears throat> okay, so, you know, okay, this, you know, gave us, uh, you know, 5 volts right off the bat, and this is, um, well, that's interesting, so yeah, this is unexpected, Okay, let's see. Yeah, so this is 50 milliamps or 45 milliamps, and this, of course, is picking up where that left off, so that's not surprising. But again, the ultimate target here, of course, is way above, you know, it's going to be 500 milliamps, you know, half an amp. Um, that's where it should be headed. So. And our voltage. You know, almost 5 volts here, but oddly enough, it's almost 5 volts here, too. Because remember, last time it was 50-50, and I was predicting that, you know, it had to do with the impedance ratio. But, again, it's, it's not working like I might have expected. Yeah, I don't know what to make of that. But again, I can understand this getting like 10% of the current because it's still got a 100 ohm impedance on it. So, you know, but actually it's getting the, the full current instead of being 25 milliamps, it's actually getting closer to the 50 milliamps flowing through it, which is what you get with 100 ohms with 5 volts, which is what we got here now. Before it just had two and a half volts across it, so you know it it wasn't getting more than 25 percent of the, or 25 milliamps of current, but now it's got almost five volts across it, so it's getting closer to the 50 milliamps of current. In other words, it's acting like a resistor, but you know since the rate of change the DIDT is show, slowing down here, here you know the voltage is dropping on the secondary, so because the voltage is dropping on the secondary, maybe that's why, you know, since the DIDT is slowing down, maybe that's why it's starting to behave more like an inductor. <coughs> because the secondary is becoming less relevant because its transfer function is falling off, you know. In other words, its DIDT is falling off, so the secondary is becoming less and less of an effect because this is just an impulse, you know. Since this is an impulse-based, you know, um, that's perhaps what's going on here. Let's follow this through. Um, but like I said, I don't know if these are actual honest to good phenomena that I'm watching. Good, you know, I don't know if I actually got this, built the same circuit on my test bench and, and tested it if I'd see the same thing or not. But let's see, this takes forever to charge up. You see the voltage is because of 10 ohms, you know, but it's storing 10 times as much energy in it. But, you notice, you know, again, a, a fraction of that energy disappeared really quick, 
through the resistor because the resistor but like I said at this point the DIDT is so low it's really not this 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 isn't really using up much of our energy you know um, you know most of the current is actually going into the magnetic field at this point um, because again you know since this was an impulse again you know it's a DIDT thing okay and that's why we had a very high you know initial response to it but now as that uh, you know charge rate dies down you know this is less and less effective and most of that energy is actually going into the magnetic field now instead of being dissipated by the resistor I mean less and less and less of that's going into the resistor now and more and more and more of it's going into the magnetic field so that makes some sense you know that at first it's acting like a resistive load at, at the very instant we switch it on it acts like a resistive a resistor you know so you know that's why we see 50 milliamps go through this and it peak at 50 milliamps and we see this start at like go from zero to instantly to 50 milliamps it behaves like a resistor at first because this is seeing five volts across it okay and because it's seeing that five volts um you know of course this resistor tries to load it as if it had five volts across it and it does it's able you know because it's small enough i guess compared to the amount of target current we have over here this resistor is small enough um you know to where it doesn't significantly impact uh, conflict with this um because you know remember it's a one-to-one -one ratio transformer but you know this will charge up Um, you know it acts like a, a low but like I said once that, that initial pulse current stops changing okay then it, it, it like cuts the resistor loose so to speak the resistor is still able to eat some power off the charge curve but most of that energy, you know, it, it's a diminishing amount of power that it takes off that charge curve. That's why I said it's like the initial curve would, should have been there, but inverted. And that's kind of what's going on. It's actually extracting that initial amount of energy. It's taking that same amount of energy and spreading it out is what's really doing. I think that's exactly what it's doing. Um, I think that's why I said you know it looked like the first part of this curve had been cut off and then inverted because it actually has it's actually taken that amount of energy out of the system stuck it into the magnetic field very you know very quickly and it's basically discharging through that resistor as we go um, that may be inaccurate but the, the, I don't know it just makes you wonder because you know that does look like it's sort of doing that but on the other hand, it may be affecting the shape of the uh, charge curve, though. I, 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 so I don't know. I may be a little off on that. But boy, it seems like that's what it's doing. It's like it's taking a chunk off that and allowing it to discharge slowly through time through the resistor. That would be weird. I mean, I doubt that it's doing that because, I mean, how would it instantly grab that amount of energy? But, um, but it almost is like it is. I mean, because, boy, that just pops up there real quick, you know. Um and is able to supply that amount of current that quickly whereas normally it wouldn't I mean normally it takes that field a while to change but remember this if I were to take this resistor okay and stick it here it would be automatically supplying it with that amount of energy you know uh, continuously I mean it would be continuously supplying it with the amount of energy this started with I mean because that had to start with the same amount of energy it would as if I took this resistor and just took it across this battery so yeah that amount of energy instantly got through it but my my question is is i wonder if it was the whole amount of energy that was, should have been there as part of that curve and it could have been given how this is behaving i mean maybe it did maybe it grabbed that it's acting like a you know it grabbed that energy amount and and, and that because that whole part of that curve is vanished but that represents a certain if you integrate that that missing part that amounts to a certain amount of energy okay that was missing but boy it looks like that same amount of energy was discharging up here you know I mean because that's what's odd you know is that 
is that all that energy like that should have been charging up in that field kind of disappeared. But again, it may not be doing that. It may just that it behaves differently at first. So it just started out as if this were hooked to that battery. Uh, but then after that, it just acts like an inductor and that this is charged. The, the, you know, the, the, the fact it's got a load modifies the shape of the charge curve. Um, and that actually could be demonstrated because that's what I'm going to do next is put a diode here like a switching power supply might have um, and kind of see how that works. But, um, but for now, I'm still just trying to experiment some of these basics and trying to analyze this. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and, um, you know, it's basically a half an amp like I predicted it would be. So let's see what happens when we discharge this motherfucker. Okay, so you can see we have a high voltage spark of 383 volts here. So, you know, that, that did through this resistor, you know, you can see it's having difficulty with it. That generated a 383 volt spark. Okay, but then it very quickly dropped down to minus 50 volts. Um, so, you know, but the amount of current Down to the nano amps, hadn't it? Okay, so this is generating a yeah. Generating a 50 volt spark. I was wondering if it was gonna do that. But the current is different. I mean, because see, this had to have maintained, I mean, where's the 500 milliamps? <laughs> That's what I, you know, well, I mean, this says minus 500 milliamps. Why is it not showing that? Oh, it is. Well, I thought it was saying microamps. Anyway, yeah, okay, yeah, it's working. Uh, so basically, yeah, this starts out at 500 milliamps. And this, we still only have 5 milliamps going through our resistor. You know, um, you know our load resistor has like 5 milliamps going through it. You know, and again, that's why I had to do this in separate scopes. This motherfucker won't work right. Because, again, they're fucking with it. Um, but, you know, yeah, this is generating a high voltage, like you might expect. Um, but, you know, you kind of expect 100 to 1 almost, which is interesting. Because, you know, if this were just an inductor, that's what you'd get, you know, because there's a 100 to 1 ratio here. I mean, you know, you should see about 500 volts, and I guess you kind of are. I mean, this is headed towards that. It's 383 volts, so it probably would be 500 volts without a load. But then it very quickly drops to, to 50 volts, but that happens to be the same voltage basically we're dealing with here. But you can see, like I said, only 5 milliamps is actually going through our... You know, 5... Yeah... Yeah, because it just very quickly drops down to 50 milliamps, and we got 50 milliamps going through it. You know, um, so again, it's taken however much of the current. Well, that's 10 percent of the current. So again, our our little resistor here is eating up um, our 1k resistor is eating up about 10 percent of the current. So it's got 50 milliamps going through it, not five like I said before, because it was five in our last circuit, but. Um, but here it's 50. So I guess this is what was misleading me, seeing that 4 milliamps there. But yeah, this has got 50 milliamps max going through the resistor. Okay, um, but the rest of it's going through a load. 
now for the 500 amps. So that's what I was suspecting is that since we had half an amp here going through the thing, I always wondered, and again, I, I really would prefer doing this without this load resistor. It's kind of confusing everything. But again, uh, as I'll still, I'll get to it in a minute. I'll show you that this thing behaves kind of weird. Um, but at any rate, it's trying to maintain that, but and normally it would have to try to maintain that through this 1K resistor. But because we've got this load on it and it's a transformer, basically it's able to maintain that half an amp current, you know, um, through our load instead of through uh, this resistor. But again, it's still a significant fraction of this. It's, you know, it's you know, 100 ohms here, 1,000 ohms here, this is this is why it's getting 50 milliamps. It's because of this. This is getting 450, and this is getting the extra 50. Because here is the ratio, you know, it's a 10 to 1 ratio, so it's, again, the discharge circuit has nothing to do with the charge circuit. <coughs> so, <coughs> so yeah, that's why we're getting this current sharing because of this, this has got still a load connection, which in practice we wouldn't have this and we'd only have this. Okay, so if we only had this, you know, this would actually get 100% of it. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. This is obfuscating, but it's still interesting to see what it's doing. I mean, it's interesting to see that it actually does still transiently have a very high voltage spike still, and that it actually shares the current you know, in a, a 1 to 10 ratio sort of way. It's actually kind of interesting. I, I wasn't even expecting to look into this, but, uh, but I'm glad that I, I'm, I'm, I am. Um, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take out this... Um, <coughs> You can see how it, it's kind of wh whacking out a little bit right now. Let me reset it just so you get a good idea. I just wanted to show you what this does. Um, see now, you know, this starts out at 45 milliamps. It's got nothing to compete with. But again, you know, and this right here will start out at 45 milliamps and, you know, incline. And this starts out at 45 milliamps and falls. Um, it's actually surprising that it's not 50 milliamps, but I, but it's not a, a hundred percent. Um, it's not a hundred percent coupled, and that's probably what ha you know. Again, here's what the settings are: it's 0.999 percent coupled, not a hundred percent coupled. So, but um, but at any rate, you know, this is how it works when it's you know, charging up, um, still takes basically forever, Let's see if I can speed it up, okay, almost there, Watch what happens when I flip it. <laughs> See, this all goes squirrely. It's going, you know, 1.6 kilovolts, 1.6 kilovolts. So it's like, it's doing what, in reality, I kind of thought it would try to do. Because I thought that it doesn't matter if you have a load over here or not. It's still going to try to act like a high voltage discharge. So... We can see that on our resistor, just like before, you know, we're actually getting about 50 volts negative, you know, which is to be expected. Um, even though this is only 5 volts, well, since, you know, the ratios between the charge resistance and the discharge resistance are off, it's a 10 to 1 ratio, the voltage here is 10 times higher because it's trying to maintain you know, this 500 milliamp current to start with. So, because again, that's the important thing is how much energy it has in it and what kind of current it's going to try to maintain. You know, what was the current going through this thing when we switched? 
you know, because that's a key point, you know, whatever current this had, it, it tries to maintain when it switches to the secondary. So, but and since we don't have our resistor here, well, none of it's going through that, but it is freaking out on the other hand, you know, it's trying to generate like really insanely high voltages um, just because it's got an open terminal, but still this resistor is satiating it. So I'm not surprised to see there's a high voltage potential here, but I am surprised to, I mean, not that surprised, but a little because again, since this is being satiated, why would this need a high voltage on it? You know, because I mean, this is a, this is taking care of allowing its its current to flow. So why would this try to generate a high voltage when something is already taking care of it? You know, that's what I, I don't understand. I mean, I would expect this voltage to actually be quite low, maybe the same voltage as this, but I, I wouldn't expect it to be that high since this is actually accommodating that field discharge so I'm really wondering if the, the reality would reflect this you know I'm wondering if this really would be one kilovolts given the fact we've got a load on it now if we didn't have a load yeah I would expect that to be the case so um, Okay, yeah, we're up to 669 kilovolts. So that's how it behaves without a load. You know, it really generates a high voltage. Now let's pop that in there. Okay. Um, you know, now here's our 500 milliamps. So again, it got rid of very little in the time I, you know, removed that uh, load. So but still generating like a lot of kilovolts here so but anyway so yeah that thing plays a role doesn't it um you know having this uh resistor in the circuit here oh, hell. god damn it spike okay we're back to normal now what I want to see I want to see if I ever actually decide to watch this fucking long ass video but um, anyway to kind of make a, um, a point here is this is actually bearing out one part of the theory that I had last night because I was saying, okay, you know, I'll bet you if the impedances are equal, you know, this will take up the current, but, um, and it does. I mean, you know, in other words, you allow this inductor to fully charge once you switch. You know, I was just a little surprised about the charge charging action, but, um, but when you, you know, switch off the charger, you know, this does behave like I thought it would behave if the resistance is, in other words, we had 5 volts discharging at 50 milliamps or whatever, you know, um, just like I would have expected. Um, but here, you know, I'm demonstrating that just like with these resistors, all right, this actually takes the place of it. So if we have this 10 to 1 ratio, you know, this is actually, um, 
behave in the same way this did in, in the sense that it's sharing the current. So at a 10 to 1 ratio, that's why this has got like 50 volts. When I do this, you know, it's almost, it's going on 50 volts. Um, and it's maintaining that, you know, at 500 milliamp current or whatnot. So, you know, so it's behaving like I thought it would. So yeah, I mean the secondary does trade. If this is at half an amp on the on the charging end, and you switch it over, it'll try to maintain a half an amp through your secondary load. Now what I was wanting to know is if I change this ratio to where you've got a ten to one ratio here, what will happen? Because we already know this is generating, you know, like fifty volts, right? So that was kind of the big question I had. Okay, so we got four volts. Four volts. Let's look at what happened here because I don't know if I did it right. I think I did do it right because like I said before this is like 50 volts right and that you can see the current is the same you know in other words it has the same 50 milliamps through here okay that's interesting oh it starts out at well I'm not sure where this is starting out why is it starting out at half an amp for huh Uh, what? Okay, so I guess that jumped so fast, huh? Okay. Well, that means it's hardly storing any energy in the field then, because it's almost jumped up to full current here. But see, since we have a 10 to 1 ratio, you know, this is putting out 10 times the current. But it's not though. I don't understand what this is doing. This doesn't make any sense. So it's putting out the same current as before at a lower voltage, yet it's eating up all this energy. And it's going to put almost nothing in the field. Okay, well, this doesn't make any sense. I don't, I'm, I don't know. I don't know what to make of this. Hmm. Huh, it's interesting. Well, I might be validating my theory that this actually did store a lot of energy really quick, and it's actually just sort of discharging it. I do know this 100 ohms is going to be reflected what, by the square of the turns ratio, right? Something like that. So, you know, that's weird though. I, I don't know why that would affect the, uh, huh. I don't know. I probably ought to stop the video. Let me see what happens here though. <sighs> okay, so we switched it. Got a little spike there. Okay, so this, let's see. So now it's at 12 milliamps. Huh. Well, 
where the fuck, I mean, so, I don't know. What the, what, I, I don't know what this is doing. This doesn't make any sense, really. That's inductors for you. Uh, yeah, I'm not surprised that this is not behaving the way I thought, because what I thought really didn't make any sense. Um, because I was making a prediction that, you know, if this had, you know, a 1 to 10 ratio, that this would actually put out a higher voltage if it was going through a higher impedance uh, than it was charged with. But it essentially isn't. In fact, it's not doing, you know, because again, I, I expected the current through this resistor to be 10 times what it was through here. Um, but it's not. It's like a tenth. So why would that be? You know, I, I, I would expect that if this were like 10 times the voltage, then it would have a tenth of the current. So that's what I'm wondering if the ratios are wrong, but if the ratios are backwards, why isn't this a really high voltage? I mean, it should be like 50 volts then, not 5 volts. So what's up? In fact, shit, this is just like, I don't, even, I don't, I don't know if this makes any sense at all. Taking so fucking long, who knows? I'm gonna switch uh, back to the same impedance on charge versus discharge. On theory, it should charge up faster. Okay, let me look at this. Alright, so this. Uh, Spiked. Yeah, because this is probably looking at like look looking at like like ten K to the primary, but it, you know that would seem so feeble. Why isn't just ignoring that? Okay, because see, we got five milliamps going through this resistor all at once, which again, it's ten percent what you'd expect if I took this and just stuck it on this battery. But given the fact it's only seeing a half a volt here, okay, I, I don't understand why it's only seeing half a volt. But maybe that's because, uh, yeah, maybe it's, it's, it would reflect a ten to one ratio, I guess. Okay. But yeah, I mean, since this has got, you know, half a volt on it, you know, which again, a 1 to 10 ratio, you'd expect that 5 volts, that should be a tenth of that across this resistor. Yeah, it's getting 5 milliamps, obviously. But, you know, that also basically is indicative of this being reflected to the square of the turns ratio. In other words, it's about 10K, like I said before. Um, but that's what's shocking is that okay for some reason we got 50 milliamps on our primary and this should be 10 times that but that's I, I don't I don't get that but it's probably not 10 times that because it's DIDT is not very high I, I guess but that's what's fascinating is that it's it's like this thing is behaving not like an inductor anymore, it's behaving like a resistor. You know, whereas before, you know, we saw it behave like a resistor at first, but then like an inductor the rest of the time. But here, you know, um, you know, when we're dealing with the same impedances but a different turns ratio, Shit, it's like it's behaving like a resistor almost the whole time. So, that's very interesting. Because again, this is slowly discharging and this is slowly charging up, you know, but, um, and again, I, you know, with the same resistance, it's, it's 50 milliamps is going to be its max. But that's what I'm surprised by. Okay, this has 50 milliamps flowing through it, even from the very get-go, you know, I would have 
expected more than that to flow through the secondary at a lower voltage. I would expect it to be, you know, half an amp. So, that's odd. But again, it has to do with the rate of change, I'm sure. So, huh. Yeah, it has to do with the rate of change, I'm sure. Because, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it's like I said, you're going to get 100 ohms on it, so the same impedance is here, so of course it's going to have a tenth of the current since it's got a tenth of the voltage across it. So, um, yeah, I mean, it couldn't possibly put out that much current. I mean, it could if the the impedance were different, but since the impedance is not different, you know, it's not able to put out that much current. But in order for it to get, you know, what it should have, in my opinion, you know, that 500 milliamps, I would have to cut this down, like you might predict, to 1 ohm instead of not, you know, 10 would even be enough, it had to be 1 ohm. Okay, I guess this has started working now. Um, So it's still got the same fucking 5 milliamps slung through it. You know, this has almost instantly gone up to... That just doesn't... That's just... I don't know. That's just... It's weird. I'm not sure what to make of that. Okay. So we still got the same fucking... Because I changed this resistance, you know, we've got the same... Um, current flowing through it, but a much lower voltage. See, I'm not quite sure what to make of this. So, I mean, this is really, like, totally ass backwards. It's not what I expected at all. So, um, because it doesn't even seem to follow regular transformer principles because, you know, and, and you kind of wouldn't expect it to because it's a pulse, but I'm still trying to reconcile what's going on with this whole thing, you know, this whole time here. You know, you've got 50 milliamps, uh, and this like instantly gets up to that level, but why, why would this voltage be so low? I mean, again, it's probably an impedance thing, you know, it's probably why. So it's an impedance thing going through this turns ratio. Um, ratio is equal, you know, you can see that the current is pretty much equal, despite the um, impedance being different. So, like before, you know, at a hundred times that, we were seeing five volts across it, right? You know, but now we're only seeing 50 millivolts across it. Um, because the ratios are so much different. It's, it's, it's interesting. So, yes, this is, this is going to take me a while to chew on this, because, again, this all works so bass backwards. It's not that surprising that it's doing that. You know, again, given how inductors are seemingly backwards, you know, in every way, 
it, it does make sense that you have a smaller resistance. The current going through it's going to be small, smaller compared to this resistor. So it's getting like 10% of the voltage and 10% of the current, or 1% of the uh, of the voltage and 1% uh, of the current. But it's not getting 1% of the current though. It's getting you know, the current's being shared equally. Interestingly enough, um, but the voltage, you know, I don't know. Because even the voltage across our inductor has dropped to like five millivolts or fifty millivolts. We're almost fully charged all of a sudden. That's why. So again, it's behaving almost completely resistively. All right. Current's still basically the same between the two, but now we're up to half a volt. Half a volt down here. Even though this is a one to one ratio, right? Okay, now we got the voltage split, but the current. start the same, but it's not the same, you know, because it's the same right at the beginning, but then this behaves, like I said, more like an inductor that's finishing charging, and uh, the voltage is split, so it's so very interesting. smaller through the resistor now. switch this back to a 10 to 1 ratio again, and I don't know, um, let me reset it. Okay, so we get 4 milliamps and 45 milliamps, but this is, you know, a tenth of the voltage. So, but it's still... Yeah, 5 milliamps times 1K would be about 5 volts, but, you know, the turns ratio would suggest it would be like half a volt, but, you know, this is jumping up, of course, really quickly, to, but it's dropping to, you know, half a volt on the input, because this is starting out almost fully charged, but, yet we're only seeing 5 milliamps there. Um, a little weird. Um, uh, so. Sure, it's quote unquote, you know, about fully charged. switch it. Of course this goes nuts. This is only acting like it's got 5 volts, which in some ways, well no, that doesn't even make sense. Um, it's minus, okay. 
So anyway, we start out with 5 milliamps, you know, which remember this had 50 milliamps to begin with. We don't have a fucking primary load at all. Um, it's taking longer to discharge, I assume. See, it's gone to about zero amps in the primary, which is not surprising. But I don't understand why. But I mean, I guess this, like I said, this could take this shit loads longer to discharge. I suppose I would have to measure the timing on it. You know, what was the charge time versus the discharge time? I don't know. I don't know because it's not really behaving like an inductor, but it still had a charge time, I guess. If you look at this curve, but the slope of this curve looks kind of similar. Let's do that again. Okay. Let's try to try to notice the slope. You know, it's five volts. All right. Um, where's the fucking time at? I mean, just get it down to, you know, where it's about. So, yeah, it's about one second, all right, to get to one percent. So, yeah, it started out as five volts, but now it's at 0 0.5 volts. So, um, about 10 percent took about one second, right? Okay, now let's discharge it. Let's see how long that takes. See if it takes. curves again look pretty similar. Okay. Yep. Takes pretty much the same time to discharge it as charge it. So what the fuck's going on here? Because, like I said, it's not maintaining the same current. It's only got a 10% of the turn, so it should have 10 times the current if it's going to maintain the same basic magnetic magnetizing force, okay, which is in ampere turns. Okay, in the primary, you know, you got 10 times the number of turns. Here it's only one tenth. So if you want the same magnetizing force, again, it's trying to maintain that magnetic field, right? That's what's collapsing. But what was creating that field was not turns of wire, it was ampere turns. Okay, well, if you want to have the same ampere turns, you can have 100 turns at 1 amp, or you can have 10 turns at 10 amps. You know, and that's what I'm a little confused by, because really, this should be 10 times the current. And in fact, if you had that much current, you know, like 50 milliamps flowing through the primary, you would expect to see half an amp flowing through the secondary. I mean, if I had a transformer, okay, and it was loaded as such that it had, you know, was drawing half an amp on the secondary, you'd certainly expect to see, you know, uh, I mean, if it was draw, drawing, you know, like 10 amps on the secondary, you'd expect to see one amp on the primary, right? Um, you know, for the same reduction ratio. But again, this may not work that way, and I'm willing to, to, you know, suspend my disbelief a little bit, because, you know, we aren't actually allowing it to draw that, uh, you know, that, uh, in, in this case, shit, that would be, you know, well, half an amp. Um, 
because again when I tried doing that it what did it do it lowered the voltage okay well that doesn't make any sense you know I'm saying here you know it was taking the exact same amount of time to discharge but then again I don't really know how much energy was actually stored in the field for that matter so but I, I don't know so but I just know as an inductor it doesn't seem to be doing its job but again it may not really be behaving like an inductor as much as a resistor or something so I, I don't I don't know, but obviously it's got energy stored in it to some extent, but obviously just not much. So maybe that's what's going on. Maybe it's just, you know, it's just not got much energy stored in it. So, yeah, that could be, that could explain it. That could be why this is behaving so weird. Okay. All right, I'm willing to accept that. Um, so my question then is what happens if I put a diode in it? I don't know what to make of that. Let me try to... Why is it acting like it's got a big voltage on it for? <sighs> Why is it 500 microvolts?
fucking piece of shit. Five volts per division. Well, this isn't how it used to work. Um, Man, this is fucking bullshit. Yeah, this goddamn simulator isn't worth a shit. And I got it real fucked up right now. Okay, whatever, you fucking piece of shit. Um, but at any rate, yeah, it's charging up like a regular inductor, as far as I can fucking tell. Um, have any fucking common sense? <sighs> yeah. Oh, let's do development on the program live! Well, we can fucking let everybody else experience the bugs we do as we try to work bugs out of our program. God, these fucking people were born under a rock. <sighs> any rate, it does look like a standard, like, you know, like, charge curve, right? So, um, you know, in other words, it looks like the inductor is charging like normal, like you'd expect. Okay, now, if you switch polarity, so it should have the same amount of energy it would have had in it before. Uh, there's no reason it shouldn't. So let's let that discharge, you know, because now the polarity is reversed. But, you know, it's like at 5 volts, okay, and, and 5 milliamps. So, yet I know it's got the same fucking energy in it. And you would think it would be trying to draw the same current. So I don't understand this one damn bit. That really doesn't make much sense. Huh. I mean, it works that way, I don't know, but I mean, I'm saying it really doesn't make much sense. Not what I expect. Anyway, I don't know. Back to the drawing board. Oh, wait a minute. I mean, I, I, I'm, this might be throwing me off. I think I thought it was equal. Well, let's see what it does if they 
the turns ratio is one to one. Fuck off, fucking cunt. Okay. Alright, so again, the charge curve should look normal. And it does, you know. It's up there just fine. You can kind of tell when it's charged because this fuck does this. It was a very weak current, still trying to simulate that anyway. Okay, now it's switched. Okay, discharged really fast. And it's doing it to the tune of 50 volts, which is what I would expect. Um, you know, our current peaked at 50 milliamps, which is what I expect. So this is behaving exactly like I would expect it to. I mean, again, it's, you know, and we didn't need a diode in it, I don't think, because didn't it behave that way without the diode? Seems like it did. Um, but it is storing the... It, it, it's, 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 it is behaving differently, obviously. Well, let me see what it... Let's compare it. Because, um, again, you, know, you can see the voltage is ten times that, which is not surprising given the ratio here. Um... see this curve here, you know, do this sort of thing, and uh, again, voltages look a little weird here, but it's finished, so, but yeah, it's still basically doing the same thing, it's, you know, in other words, it's still generating, you know, you know, minus 50 volts at minus 50 milliamps, like you'd expect, it's still trying to maintain that current through a higher value resistor, um, but of course it takes less time to discharge by, you know, a tenth of the time to discharge that it took to charge, so, you know, this can be kind of verified here, and it was about ten times, so that looks about right. So, that's behaving like I would expect, based on what I know about inductors so far. What I don't understand is why when I change that turns ratio it does that. I mean, I know the one thing it does have going for it, though, is it's probably got a different inductance with a different turns ratio. The secondary probably has a different inductance than the primary, and I know voltage has to do a lot with the inductance, so that maybe that's what's going on, and it's just freaky. So I, I don't know, I just, it just, the physics of it doesn't really make a lot of sense right off the bat. Because like with the diode in there, okay, I know we stored the same amount of energy we essentially have in it, you know, with, with no load on it at all, right? The, the same amount of energy is being stored in the field. And it should want to try to maintain that current, even when we su switch in a load resistor, but it, it, it doesn't behave that way for some reason, and it should, I mean, because again, it shouldn't behave any different than it does now, you know, because this basically is behaving the exact same way it did when I had this in here and no load on the transformer. That resistor, setting this aside, the capricious, capriciousness of this aside, this is taking the place of this, which is what I expected to see. You know, I expected to see this voltage do that and this current do that. That is exactly what I predicted. Um, but what I don't understand, alright, is why why would it um, you know, behave way differently because I changed the turns ratio. Because again, it's not a question of it behaving like a resistor, because at this point it's just an inductor. It doesn't think like it's a transformer or anything. So it's just an inductor. You know, it's an inductor. It's like a dual port inductor. I charged it in this port. I'm discharging it in this port. Um, especially when you have a diode in there. It's really like that then. Um, but like I said, you know, we put the diode back in there and.
and it'll behave pretty much the same, right? So that's about how long it takes to charge, you know. Uh, and that's how long it takes to discharge. Okay, and that's how much voltage it generated and how much current and everything's behaving exactly like you'd expect. The diode made no real difference. You know, I know it's got the same amount of energy in it because it has a load disconnected when we're charging and reconnected when we're discharging. So this enforces that diode behavior. That's why it's, I, I was led to believe they do this in a, you know, in a um, SMPS. But why is it when I change the turns ratio, it, this whole thing goes to shit? Because <laughs> I expected at the very least it would make it would do the same current, you know, is what I was predicting. It would do the same current, but there's a possibility it would do ten times the current because of a ten time turn ratio. Because it's still trying to maintain the same basic current flow or the same field uh, intensity in order... Because, like I said, in order to, you know, generate a magnetic field of a certain value, and this is all about a collapsing field, right? You know, again, I can supply one amp at 100 turns to generate a field, or I can generate that exact same field using 10 amps at 10 turns. So, that's why I was saying, oh, as postulating, okay, if we charge this field up with, with one amp, at a, you know, 100 turns, it should, in theory, discharge at 10 amps because it's trying to maintain that field. You know, it's not so much current as it's a field it's trying to maintain. So, um, you know, I mean, the, the number of turns of wire is irrelevant, you know, with the exception of what kind of current and voltage it's going to try to... And again, voltage doesn't even enter the equation at this point. It's a field, it's at a static state, it's at a static charge, we've got a static current through it. It has nothing to do with a rate of change. You see, like in an AC transformer, it has everything to do with the rate of change because that's why you've got that, that ratio that, you know, 100, 100 volts in, 10 volts out, because you've got an AC waveform going into it which is constantly changing. Okay, that's responsible for generating that ratio continuously. But here, we're not talking about that. The ratio is totally irrelevant. I, it, it doesn't matter that I charged at one ratio, except to say that I had one current, uh, a, a, one amp of current flowing through it, for example, but that was to maintain a certain electric field, or a magnetic field. But now when we switch it, okay, that uh, the first inductor disappears, but it can switch to it just like it's doing right now it can switch you know at a one-to-one -one ratio it can switch to a different coil and have it take the place of this coil you know this is freaking out you know trying to generate a high voltage or whatever but it shouldn't even in reality do that because the secondary is taking care of it you know it's trying to maintain that magnetic field and that's what we're talking about that's what it's not the wire that stored the field in it it's the magnetic it's the magnetic field itself that stored the energy. It's not the wire. The wire, the energy is not in the wire. It's in the magnetic field. And especially if it has an iron core, or like this does, you know, or magnetic core, it's going to actually be stored in the magnetic core for the most part, but more specifically in the field around the concentrated magnetic core. So you can switch, you know, take the same core, okay, and switch a wire to it. You know, it's just like a capacitor, okay? You can take a capacitor you know, and, you know, basically take two plates and put it around a dielectric and charge that dielectric up, and then if you remove the plates of the capacitor and put, you know, take it and, and roll it up and store it for a while, then take it out and put two new plates on it, it'll actually still have that same charge. I mean, it's, the charge is actually stored mostly in the dielectric. It's not in the plate, shockingly enough. This is kind of the same way. I mean, the, the, the magnetic, the energy is being stored in the magnetic field. You know, in, in, in this case, it, you could look at it as in the core, because that's why you have such an intense magnetic field, because of the uh, metallic core. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, in principle, it's stored in the electric field. Just like in a capacitor, if you have a free space capacitor, it's purely in the electric charge, you know, the 
potential difference between those plates that's storing energy, right? So there's no dielectric to remove. So if you take the plates apart, well, you know, you know, that's just a, a charged plate, you know, it's no big deal, right? Um, there's no dielectric involved, but if you have dielectric, it's different. Well, just like this, you know, and, and it's an air core inductor, it's going to store energy in that magnetic field, but only in that magnetic field. But since we have a core in it, it's storing energy technically in that core, too. That's why you can switch coils. You can't switch coils in an air core inductor very easily. I mean, in theory, you actually could, because you know, you could have a bifiler wiring or something like that, you know, and actually pick up on on uh, the secondary what went into the primary. I mean, in theory, it could actually work that way too, because it doesn't store it in the in the it doesn't store it in the copper anymore that it actually stores it in the magnetic field technically. And even in the dielectric field, the capacitor, it's not the dielectric material itself that's stored, but it's tra trapped charges that store the you know the the charge on the capacitor. So. Um, you know, it's like an electorate, so it's it's sort of you know, holding its place. But anyway, the the point is is that um, you know this uh, this is storing a certain amount of energy in it, and it should try to maintain that current, and it does in this. But if I change the turns ratio, um, shit, I, I would expect it to behave different. Again, you know, here we are getting, you know, uh, higher voltage. So, you know, again, that's what I would expect. You know, I would expect this to do it. And, and again, it behaves properly if you have the turns ratio one to one. So, It's not fully charged. Five volts, that's what I'd expect. Okay. Now, make it reverse. So this would be a high voltage transformer. Basically, I've got one to ten uh, on the ratio. Okay, it looks fully charged. Okay. All right, so it's generating you know 50 volts negative, which is what you'd expect. The impedances are the same. You know. Um, I, I, it's behaving like a high voltage transformer, basically. And again, impedances being the same, you know, you might expect that. So, I don't know. But, sure, you know, and you can see the current has gone up, you know, to 500 milliamps, so that's interesting huh. so we get 10 times the voltage and 10 times the current but it just charges way more quickly so I guess that you know is in line I suppose Like I said, I don't, I don't have a clue how fast that's discharging, but it had to be really, really fast to compensate for that, because that's like the square that it's trying to deal with. I mean, because that's like ten times the current and ten times the voltage of what it's charged at. So, you know, that's a, you know, means you know uh, a lot more energy, like a hundred times the energy, but not if it's discharging really fast. I'm just not quite sure how fast it's discharging, you know, but boy, that's pretty fucking fast. And 
again, it sure doesn't charge up very fast. You know, it takes it that long to charge up, but that long to discharge. Huh. So that suggests it's a more energetic discharge. Because again, it's like the power went through the roof on that discharge. I mean, it's... Because that's a much more energetic discharge. I don't know if this makes any sense. This is really strange. Again, the voltage is pretty high, and the current, you know, is 10 times what the charge current was, which is still just 50 milliamps, you know, that's, that's how much of a, effectively how much energy we put into it, uh, but boy, yeah, that's just charging in like one one hundredth the time, so it's got 10 times the current and 10 times the voltage, and it's the exact opposite of going the other way, you know, um, if you take it to where it's a 10 to 1 ratio, it's like it's got a tenth the voltage and a tenth the current. Which, like I said, we can look at that. Okay. And the charge time should be identical. We didn't affect that by changing the turn ratio. The discharge time should be way drawn out. And it is. Should be 10 times what it was, but you can see it's only 5 milliamps at 5 millivolts, or half a, half a volt. So it's a, ten, a tenth. I'd expect this to be a tenth, just like I would expect the voltage to be 10 times on the other one. That wouldn't surprise me. It makes some sense. But the current, that's what's so surprising. Because it's like it's not even trying to maintain it. I, I, I don't understand. You know, so I mean, I, I you know, I'm, I'm inclined to say this damn thing's broken, and given the fact they're working on it and it's a simulation, who knows? But uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe this is for real. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what to make of this. So, anyway, yeah, after, you know, like I said, if you actually follow, um, you know, the fact that, okay, L equals one half. Li squared. All right, if you you know, plug that all in, you realize that this thing's storing at four, you know, Henry's about um, you know, it's like five nanojoules or or five mil, uh, millijoules or something like that. But anyway, if you do the calculations, it works out the way I was thinking. Because again, I was thinking that this should be, you know, since it's a ten to one ratio, it should be ten times that fifty milliamps or half an amp. Now, what I wasn't sure of is if it was going to force half an amp through our resistor or not, you know, because if it did, well, shit, it's the same resistance, so that would be, you know, like, way up in the voltage, right? So, um, you know, so it should produce a 50 volt output instead of the half a volt output you would expect based on it being a transformer. But... So, you know, that's what I was trying to say is that, you know, because we know when it's one-to-one, -one, it behaves just as if it, you know, just as it did with this and no transformer at all, just an inductor. Um, but if we take um, <coughs> the fact that this is charged up to a certain energy level, then this is disconnected. It's got that same energy level, so if you work the equation you know, of E equals one half, you know, Li squared, backwards to find, you know, solve for the current, well, the current comes out to be half an amp, like you would think. And then, of course, voltage is equal to L um, di dt, okay, but because the current would be so much higher, you would expect the voltage to change faster, right? You know, because you'd expect your current to be higher, but since it's higher, it's going to change faster, because it's still got a finite amount of energy, okay, and you can discharge that energy faster with a higher current, and therefore reduce the uh, total, drain the energy out of it in a tenth the time, okay. So I'd expect the DIDT to be higher, and but but 
thing is is that you know if you look at the um, the windings okay this is what I, I did discover that was interesting and that's that you know okay we got four Henry's in our main coil right but that the, the number of Henry's is a function direct function of the square of the windings so which isn't on this deal but uh, But yeah, it's it's on like one of these, but you can't see it. Damn it! <sighs> but anyway, it's frick. Come on, you fucking slow ass piece of. And Microsoft sucks. I mean, it takes this long to fucking see a picture. I mean, really? Fucking confident idiots. But anyway, you know, like I said, the inductance is proportional to the square you know of the number of turns so if you go from like a hundred turn primary down to a ten turn secondary well the inductance is actually going to be one one hundredth um, so this would have actually point zero four you know Henry's uh, on the secondary so that's why there's going to be a change so you know you got to calculate that based on that that but it still works out the way I'm talking about even if you figure it out that way so you know I, I mean it's still coming out with the anticipated amount of current um, and I, I don't know though I mean you know because like I said with, with it being you know uh, 0.5 amps I mean yeah you'd expect it to drain that energy faster but maybe maybe not because it's got fewer turns so it might be drawing it out at a faster, you know, higher current, but at a lower voltage. So, you know, again, because it is differing inductance, so it's a smaller inductance, so, you know, again, um, you know, your voltage equals L DIDT. So, you know, your DIDT may actually be slower now, because it's at a lower voltage so the current's higher but the voltage is lower so it spreads out in time which is kind of what we're well we're not seeing that here though but um but again it, it still may be a lower voltage you know it may be the the half a volt here but um But yeah, it may be the half a volt here, but at a higher current, so I don't know, you know. But I don't know, I mean, I'm just kind of astonished, because again, when it's a one-to-one -one turns ratio, it's not the voltage that's important, it's maintaining that current. Well, in theory, the equivalent current should be half an amp, you know. Uh, why isn't it trying to maintain that? And if it were, the value of this resistance should dictate what the voltage is, not the turns ratio. You know, the turns ratio is evidently determining the current, but I wouldn't expect it to determine the voltage in this case. Um, so, we've got a 100 ohm resistor here with half an amp going through it. I expect to see 50 volts on the output, not half a volt. So, but I'd also expect to see half an amp over here, not 5 milliamps. You know, because this seems to be doing just the opposite. It's like, you know, reducing the voltage and the current, and that just doesn't make sense. So, uh, I don't really, I suspect this program isn't working right. But, you know, I, I could be wrong. Maybe it is working right. But I, I just have a feeling it's sort of trying to treat this like a trans with a transformer model when it really should be applying an inductor model. So it may not be calculating the physics right because it might be more because this is a power transformer or whatever, so it might be more gearing this towards you know like having an AC signal going through it or some shit. 
So again, this may be confusing it. That's why I don't know if I can count on it. Again, I have a feeling that it is working right when you got it at a one-to-one -one ratio because that is exactly what I'd expect to see. But I really expected to see, I don't know, there's different behavior here a little bit, but it's just kind of weird, you know, up in this inductance, I mean, up in this, um, I mean, keeping the uh, um, impedance the same, and, you know, anyway, let, let's just see what it does on the, So, see, this just does not make sense. Okay, so I, you know, I lowered the inductance, which, you know, you'd expect some kind of a, you know, again, something that baffles your expectation. But I don't know that this makes sense. So, it, it makes me wonder if this whole thing is treating inductors right at all. I mean, maybe inductors really don't behave this way. And maybe this thing is just wrong, period. You know, that's a possibility but I kind of doubt it because this I derived this off their example, okay? So, I mean, I would expect the physics to be right because, I mean, you know, this was basically just the, one of those inductor test circuits, you know, which actually shows just that. You would expect it to behave that way. Um, but maybe not. I mean, maybe it's fucked up. I mean, who knows? Um, but this really doesn't make sense. I mean, okay... So it's cutting the current down to 10% and cutting the voltage down even further um, because I decrease the impedance of this. That doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, because it's taking longer to discharge now. And it's doing it at a lower current. Because, again, I was thinking that we were getting the results we were because I was like, well, okay, it's using the transformer, okay, and it's, you know, the turns ratio, it's cutting its voltage down to 0.5 volts, which, you know, is a 10 to 1 ratio, that makes sense, and it's discharging the current like it is because it was 100 ohms divided into, you know, 0.5 volts, so, you know, you'd expect that to be like 5 milliamps, right? Um, if this were a transformer supplying current, you know, you'd expect to see a 5 volt output across this resistor produce a 5 milliamp current. You know, you would expect that to, to do that, but then to change that to 1 ohm and say, because I would expect the current to be higher if this was behaving like a fucking transformer. So, you know, it's got the same 5 milliamps here, and now it's the half a volt. That just doesn't make sense. I do not think this thing's simulating this properly. I mean, that just doesn't, it just baffles me. It just does not make sense. I mean, it's it's because this is nowhere near an attempt. You know, again, we got a tenth the number of windings. This is nowhere near an attempt to maintain that fucking um, you know. It's nowhere near an attempt to maintain that same current flow. That just doesn't make sense. It doesn't, it doesn't add up. I mean, five milliamps times in in for example into ten. Uh, turns is, you know, 5 milliamp per turns, okay, um, that's not going to really add up to the, the same current we had in the primary, so, uh, it, which it should be trying to maintain, it just, it doesn't seem to be behaving properly, so, it's like I said, I, I don't know, I mean, this is going to, I'm going to have to leave this as an open question, I just, I don't know what to make of this, so, um, I just, I have a feeling this shit isn't being simulated properly. Uh, again, I'll save it. 
So where did that fun oh Anyway, I'll probably put this stuff in the theory folder uh, ultimately in this uh, SMPS stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't know what to make of this crap. I mean, I, I have no idea. I just have a feeling this isn't working right. But it could be wrong. Maybe it is because, like I said, it's maybe it's it's you know it's actually getting rid of the energy technically in accordance with physics, you know, because. And, and it's acting weird in accordance with inductors so I mean it could be that it's behaving right I, I don't I don't know it just it's not behaving like I'd expect because the one constant you can count on is that it should be trying to maintain that current just like it was when the turns ratio was one to one here you know it should be trying to do that and if I change the turns ratio it should have to, to increase the current if it's going down or decrease the current if it's going up because of the, of the ampere turns. I just wouldn't expect the current to decrease and the voltage to increase on top of that. Um, but if the current did decrease okay, and was spread out like that, I would actually expect the voltage to decrease because the DIDT is so low. So that actually in theory could jibe. I mean, it could add up. Um, but it's just, it's just kind of weird that the current would be reduced like that. That's just not what I expect, you know. I mean, cause, but but it, it might be. I mean, maybe it's a, you know, maintaining the, I don't know. I mean, because the amount of flux should be the same. Um, so, I don't know. But I guess there's just more about inductors I need to learn. I really need to go look at that stuff I, uh, you know, from that coil gun site, you know, which had a really good treatment of magnetics and so forth. Because there's still just holes I'm missing, obviously. So, it's frustrating, but, you know, I'm hoping I'll figure it out one of these days. Anyway, 